What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today, we're gonna be working on the Audi's braking system. Yes, again. Now, you might ask, why again, if you guys have watched my previous videos? Well, I did some track days, I did two track days, one on the stock pads, which I completely toasted the stock pads on the car at Laguna Seca. Then I did a track day at Thunder Hill East. Um, when I did that, I upgraded the braking system with Castrol React, SRF, braking fluid this stuff is legit and i also installed some cobalt friction xr2s in the rear and xr1s in the front of the car now these pads worked amazing amazingly at thunder hill east let me show you how well they did i actually melted the paint off my brake caliper that's not dirt that's literally meltage see that those used to be red, now they're crispy black. The rears, not so much. You can see they're still powder coated. That should kind of give you an idea of how much I did use the brakes when I was at Thunder Hill. They worked, I had zero fade. I was able to do full sessions with the braking system. Freaking mash on the brakes and consistently stopped. Stopped very well, had great bite and all that. So now you're saying, well, why are you gonna do the brakes again? Well, around the street, they're absolutely horrible. And what I mean by that is they're loud. They clunk. They don't have any springs on the top to keep them in their uh, carrier, in the brake carrier. So they kind of clunk around, they make noise. Yeah, they just, they vibrate and jiggle over every single bump and you get a lot of squeaking coming up to stops. So every time you come to a stop, no matter what, it's just ee! Every time you hit the brakes, ee, ee! everybody looks at you like, what the hell's wrong with your car? Dude, don't worry, I'm on race pads. My brakes are actually better than yours but they sound like hell. After talking to the guys at BMP Tuning, um, I picked up some EBS brake pads. So these ones should be a lot more friendly. Have my buddies up at M45 turn the rotors. Um, these are the original stock rotors, so now you can see they're all nice and fresh and uh, ready to be reused because these actually were still fine. They were still within tolerance, and now they're all good. So I'm gonna have a set of track race pads, track rotors, and a set of street pads and street rotors. So really, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I had to borrow the VAGCOM tool from my buddy Jet again. Thanks a lot, Jet, that you're awesome. Uh, so that I can redo the rear brake pads because this car requires the computer to basically put them into a retracted mode you, to actually retract the caliper in. That way you can replace the pads and then you have to recalibrate them after you're done. So as I was saying to the uh, other brake pads, the Cobalts did not have this little piece right here, which really helps with it rattling around in the uh, caliper because uh, you get a lot of vibration and all that throughout the noise through the road. And it also did not have this. So I just kind of uh, just rigged it up and made it to where uh, my old one wasn't causing an issue. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much the front. Also, which nice, came with some caliper lube. So I'll be able to lube up those slide pins, so great. These are the Red Stuff ceramic brake pads. These are slightly upgraded, um, but they should be fairly quiet. So I'm hoping that they're gonna be nice and quiet and they're gonna just have a little more stopping power than the standard stock pads. As you can see here, there's the spring. That's what I was talking about. The, the cobalt rear pads do not have this spring, which again makes it kind of just rattle around and uh, causes vibrations. Um, every time I put the car in reverse, you can actually hear all four pads go clunk clunk and kind of tilt in the carrier in their direction, which again is fine. They worked great. They're great track pads, but I mean, it reminds you, hey, they're not for the street. As far as cold bite and initial bite, when they were cold, they actually did great. I had no issues with them. You know, I didn't feel that uh, they were dangerous in any way or that you couldn't stop the car. It still feels really good. And by that, I mean, if the brakes are not warmed up. When the brakes are warmed up, they're even better. So let's go ahead and throw these on. Okay, so I placed the car into caliper lining mode. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, remove 
the brake caliper out of its carrier assembly. Just gotta remove the two bolts on the back side. Super easy, and I can pull the pads out. Also, I gotta pull this little clip kinda off the front. And then we can take the rotor and the brake off. Super simple, super easy. I'm not really gonna show you the process, guys. I'm just gonna go, go through it because you already saw this in the other video. Just kinda wanted to update you on what I'm doing. And if you didn't see my previous video, yes, that motor back there or that, yeah, that is a motor because it's electronic. Uh, that right there has to be controlled by a computer to make the caliper or the actual piston in the caliper retract. Then you can compress it the rest of the way like normal. It actually does not screw in. You just compress it just like you would on a front brake caliper. Super simple, super easy, but you do need that tool because I'm going to be doing pad swaps pretty often. Uh, I labeled it as outside left, inside left and then left rear on the uh, rotor. That way I can remove it and put it into the same spot every single time. That way I don't have any issues with it uh, wearing weird or anything like that. Now what's really cool is you don't have to take the carrier off on the rear of these. You can actually get it out just like that. So it actually makes rear rotor changes really easy. Um, as far as rotor wear, I mean, not too bad. It, it has a slight lip but uh, nothing really too bad there, so it looks good. All right, so new pads are installed. Looks good, red on red. I like it, it looks pretty sweet. So wheels gonna go back on, this will be good for here. I wanna talk about uh, wheel bolts. I don't know why everyone complains about them. I, I think they're pretty fine. Uh, I mean, if you have hub-centric wheels, it's not that hard to balance, I don't know. Everyone always seems to uh, bitch and complain about these, but I don't find them that difficult, I mean, yes. Uh, lug nuts or studs are definitely easier, but it's it's really not that hard. All right, guys, rear pads are installed. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put the car back into accessory mode. So I'm just gonna hit that start button one time without my foot on the brake because the car will start. So I'm gonna go to back to ABS brakes. So I'm gonna go to inlining change mode. Now what it's doing is it's recalibrating my parking brake. Says so finished correctly, done. It's looking good. So yeah, here's the caliper and as you can see on the front, that is baked paint. That used to be smooth. Now it is not smooth. That is not brake dust. That is actually toasted paint. So uh, needless to say, the brakes held up. They did good. Um, Yes, they did take a bit of heat, and they actually kept on ticking. So this car basically had two track days and one, because Rachel was driving the car and I was driving the car, so they definitely got worked. And yeah, they kept working, but man, do these things squeak bad. I mean, hear it already right there. Sis, 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 sis. It's bad. So on the outside front pad, you can actually see it kind of, it kind of got a... Kind of got tore up right there on the inside right there, so I don't know. Uh, the pads did good though, however. I mean, just had a little bit of an uneven wear there. The other one kind of had, it seemed like a bit of a hot spot in the middle too. I'll show you that one. This is the inside and you can kind of see the center right there. Uh, just definitely has like a little groovy looking, really abrasive spot, but you can really see how abrasive these pads are. Also, you can already see the difference in wear on the pads. That is the inside, which presses against the piston, whereas this one is on the outside. You can see the outside one has worn a lot more. We have a lot more wear, and that's that's after one track day. So that just kind of shows you how much brakes can uh, get worn down. So you really got to keep an eye on this stuff. All right, sweet. So those are installed, new pads, toasted rotors, all good. Um, yeah, and new rotors. Sorry, not toasted rotors, toasted calipers. But yeah, it's looking sweet. Basically, you're gonna have two sets of uh, brand new braking systems, a track set and a uh, street set. So I hope you guys liked that little install video. Uh, if you want a more detailed one, click this little eye up here. I have the full breakdown of how I did the brakes on the car, but you know, I know you guys just saw this stuff, but I wanted to go into detail on why I'm changing the brakes already and what the reasoning is behind that basically. So yeah, uh, overall, install is really easy if you have the VADCOM tool. It's just like a basic brake job. Um, it takes you about, I don't know, two hours to do all four brakes maybe. Something like that, maybe a little quicker if you have um, a friend helping you jack up the car and that sort of stuff. So anyways guys, we'll talk to you soon. Make sure to subscribe, later, wrench on.